Thank you. My name is Anna Edwards, and I'm a member of the Defenders for Freedom, Justice, and Equality. We're a small community group in Richmond, Virginia, and um, we work for the survival of the community through social justice uh, actions and uh, education. Two of our means are radio program, which I've been doing uh, weekly since 2005, and uh, the newspaper, the Virginia Defender, which I'm uh, talking and I think um, we may have some copies for people who are interested after the program. But this has been a really important part of the way that we have been able to do our work in the community. Um, having something in, in people's hands to, uh, to, to have help them refer to when we're talking about some of these issues, which are really, can be very, very complicated, even if the principles behind them are very simple uh, and, and should be very clear. Um, we. What I'm really, really glad that both Abiyomi and, and Margaret Kimberly coming forward with talking about the role of the black community in the U.S. Uh, in relation to what's happening in Africa, what has been happening and what is, is uh, in the process of happening. Um, because one of the things that we have tried to do in the community in, uh, in Richmond is to try to link these things together, to get people locally you know, embroiled in our the economic and social justice issues uh, to understand what's happening and how those things that are happening in Africa and other oppressed uh, nations of the world um, are tied to what is happening in the U.S. and in their communities. And so I, I, I wanted to be able to say that I believe that the survival of the black community in Richmond, as an example of in the U.S., is tied and will be tied to the survival and forward motion of united African peoples on the continent who have to be strong and independent of exploitation by imperialist forces. Thus, how the black community across spectrums of political tendencies, because you know, we are coming to understand um, both in terms of uh, what's happened since Obama became president, um, but also leading up to that since the period of black liberation uh, strength in this country, um, is that how this black community responds to Africa uh, in the near and long-term future is going to be uh, critical. Uh, to making any kind of change. As an organization uh, that is anti-interventionist and anti-imperialist, our position is that Mali's situation, uh, though complex, again, I'm going to talk about Mali because that's my direct relationship uh, to, this, uh, to this issue, and then, um, but as a representative uh, case for what's happening in Africa. That Mali's situation uh, is very complicated if you are going to try and understand what's going on internally and, and how the various people have had to uh, figure out how to respond and, and, and not respond. It, but regardless of all of that, the United States has no legitimate role to play in Mali. What the U.S. has had for a long time is a strategy for Africa, and it's a strategy that has directly involved Mali most recently. It can't physically occupy Africa in, in the traditional sense. But it does have now troops disseminated through at least 35 of its countries. And what those troops serve to do is provide the beginnings of bases of operations continent-wide. The strategy uh, that the U.S. is employing is very much like the British used in India and the Middle East, and that is, of course, to work through controllable regional powers. Mali, in spite of its appearance as, as, uh, and in spite of the publicity of it being a strong uh, democratic nation uh, that was successful in the eyes of the United States, was in fact becoming weaker and weaker, especially over the last 10 uh, to 15 years. And in its weakened state, it was being forced to work with both the United States in terms of its military and um, through to other players, uh, both on the African continent and outside. Um, and those pressures resulted in a almost non-existent uh, army in, in that the Malian army has not been able to defend its own country from uh, forces both inside and outside. And so that when the crisis hit two years ago uh, with the rebellion, um, the attacks on the Mali base in, uh, in uh, the Kidal region and then the uh, rebellion of the Mali army against the president, which then overthrew the presidency, um, demonstrated how very weak internal situation actually was. Uh, in spite of this, the U.S. Uh, has continued with its role in terms of how it worked through ECOWAS uh, and uh, the uh, European Union uh, as its allies 
to keep its position uh, stable within Mali in terms of providing support to France when it came in and pushed the forces back that uh, had moved into uh, central and were headed towards southern Mali uh, just this year in January. Uh, disruption by this rebellion and by uh, the radical forces which moved in from the north, some of which came from Libya as a result of that destabilization, there were the beginnings of uh, uh, ECOWAS and others trying to figure out how they were going to pull together an all-African force because, of course, the word was is that we can't do it, Africa's got to do it. Um, but it became fairly evident that it was going to take a very long time and in fact, they proclaimed that it was going to be, you know, from April of 2012 until September of 2000, of this year, um, before uh, that force would be ready to act on in Mali's defense. Um, the northern forces weren't waiting for them to get ready, and so they did begin their uh, incursions, uh, moving southward in January. And um, I was, in fact, in Mali at the time. I was in Segu, which. Segu is a town in central southern Mali, which uh, at one point was within 40 miles of the fighting that was taking place. Uh, we moved down into Bamako because we were being told to prepare to, uh, to evacuate, but in fact, it never really came as far as uh, Segu. However, it did get as far as the Niger River um, in terms of a town just north of Markala. Markala is um, one of the most significant bridges crossing the Niger River. Uh, just 30 to 40 miles north of, uh, of Segu. And um, that was built by the French in the 1930s as an irrigation uh, uh, mechanism and was always considered uh, strategically, militarily very important. And yet while I was there, Markala as a bridge and as a, uh, as a military um, uh, point um, was not defended. There was no Malian army there defending that site, whereas in previous visits, they had been there. So a lot of what was going on in Mali, we could see even in the short period of time that we were there, that something was very, very wrong. The forces that ought to have been there that were Malian to defend itself from whatever is going on were not, were not present. <coughs> the U.S., as a result of what happened, had to adjust its strategy. And so it supported France when it came in on January 12th by providing transport for its troops and its supplies to come in and begin the aerial bombardment. It began to move the forces north. And in so doing, um, it, it, what everybody saw was um, a lot of cheering and a lot of flag waving on the ground uh, in, in Bamako and uh, in the southern areas, which is what you got to see on the press. You did not get to see uh, the demonstrations that were opposed to this intervention. Um, and that is something that has grown in uh, visibility uh, and voice uh, in, the, in the months since then. <coughs> on the ground in Mali, in the absence of an alternative force, and as I mentioned, an indigenous Malian force, it, it is incontrovertible that the French intervention was strongly welcomed. But what it means for us um, in the anti-imperialist left, left is that we still <coughs> have to understand that um, there is no other goal for the U.S., even as it cloaks what it's been doing in, uh, in a humanitarian kind of aid. Um, Francois Hollande has just received uh, the United Nations Peace Prize <laughs> for his military, uh, you know, uh, for the military uh, invasion. Well, Obama got one, so he actually can It did seem to feel like part of the trend. And I even, I think even after I was there, I mean, Francois Hollande also showed up in order to be received by the Malian people, which is probably one of the most painful things to watch while I was there, was for him to come and walk amongst the people so that they could, you know, touch and thank and be grateful and, and all that kind of stuff. And again, that was the publicity that you saw. That was, that was what we were presented with. And yet, the undercurrent, even while I was there, was that Malians are very frustrated. They are very frustrated by the situation within Mali that, that led to them being weak enough that this, was, this happened and, and they were not able to defend themselves. But there is also, <coughs> again, this idea that where are the, where are the minds and where are the, the movements and organizations, people who work from the left perspective, even in Mali? Because uh, even of all the, the slate of candidates that are going to be running for president, which is coming up in July, um, 
in that slate, there is no strong voice. It almost looks like a sort of a regular random election from the United States where <laughs> nobody's really got a platform, but everybody's got a photo. And, uh, and so it's, it's a little disheartening because it means that you can probably look at that slate and, and see you know, who, who's got the most money, who's got the most connections, and who's the easiest to get along with in terms of the Europe, Europe and uh, United States diplomatic uh, arena. And, uh, and so it doesn't leave much to hope for in this particular uh, election. Um, I'm sort of going through these notes and it's a much longer presentation, so I don't wanna um, go through all of that because really when it, what it comes down to, again, is our posi the thing that is most important for us working in the United States is one that we are, it is very important that we continue to understand the complexity of the situation in Mali and in the nations throughout Africa, and especially from this larger continent-wide uh, perspective. It's also going to be very, very important um, that we uh, counter, with everyone we talk to, the idea that there can be a humanitarian intervention by Western military forces. That simply doesn't exist. We also have to be tuned into um, explaining U.S. strategic long-term goals for the region um, and to any rise in an anti-imperialist and independent movement from within Mali uh, by the Malian people, which is something they have not seen for a very long time. I think it can be very important that we begin to tune into who are the people who remember what the independent struggle was in Africa and who are picking up on that legacy in order to move Africa forward. Mali will not be able to um, defend itself in future or manage any of its resources if it cannot from within uh, develop the, uh, the, the, the people and the leadership and the strength to be able to um, know what it has and, and to push back and form alliances on the continent um, and, and outside of the continent that will actually help them achieve the goals that they set for themselves. So I'm going to leave it at that and then Thank you.